Next, we are going to create an instance of the expense core data entity and save it to the persistence store. Let's navigate to the single expense view controller. And here's where we're actually going to create our expense instance and actually save it to the persistence store. So I'm going to navigate down to the save expense function. And let's get all of our properties from our UI elements first and save those into constants. So let name equals name text field dot text. Let amount equal amount text field dot text. And actually, let's change that. Instead of calling this amount, let's call this amount text. And next, let's get our date, which is equal to our date picker dot date. So when we created our expense subclass, and we can even navigate back to our core data properties, you could see that the amount is stored as a double, not as a string. So we are actually inputting the amount as a string. It is our responsibility to turn that string from a string to a double. So very first thing that I'm going to do is if amount text does not actually have text in it, I'm going to initialize it with a blank string. That way it is no longer optional. Because of the fact that a text on a text field is optional, we're using the nil coalescing operator to give it a default value of an empty string if it does not exist. Now I'm going to create another constant, and this constant is actually going to be called amount this time. Let amount equals, and Dale, how do I turn a string into a double? You can use a double with an initializer from a string. Which takes in a string, and let's pass it the amount text. Now I'm going to get yelled at here, because that's not the correct initializer. So scrolling through, and text. Darn it, I should not even give it a parameter name. So now, passing in the amount text, and we can tell that amount is actually a double optional. Dale, can you explain why that's optional? The text passed to the initializer for double may or may not represent an actual double number. If it doesn't, it can't give us a double, so it would have to give us nil instead, and that means it has to be an optional. Now that we have our values for our new expense, let's actually create one of these new expenses. And let's do that below our date. So let's call it just simply expense at the moment, and equals to, we're going to access our expense class. And we created an initializer that takes in a name, an amount, and date. Now I notice amount there is is a double, not a double optional. True, so we should fix that before we continue. But I'm gonna double click this just so we can have the initializer out there. Navigate back to the amount. And just like I gave the amount text a default value of an empty string if it does not exist, let's give our double a default value of 0.0, .0 if it cannot convert our text to a double. Look good? It looks good, and in a production app, we would actually take the input from the user and make sure that it meets the conditions, and if not, prompt the user to fix problems before we actually save an expense. So now that we have all the values and they're of the correct type, let's assign them into our expenses by passing in name, passing in the amount, and passing in our date. This has actually created an expense subclass, expense instance, which expense is a subclass of our NS managed object. When we create this class using our convenience initializer that we created in the core data class, this instance is actually saved currently into our managed context. You could think of the managed context as essentially a scratch pad. We could create as many objects as we want in this managed context but unless we actually save that managed context, those will not persist to the persistence store. So our job right now is because we've created this instance on our managed context, is to now save the managed context to make sure it will always persist. So we've created our expense, and now we need to save our managed context. So I'm gonna, actually let's wrap our expense in an if let, because we only want to ever create 
or save or manage context if the expense creation was successful. Notice now that expense is no longer optional, and you can notice that convenience initializer is a failable initializer, which means it could fail and return nil. Now that we do this, we need to put our code in a do catch block. So do, and then catch. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is if our code in our do catch block throws an error, that error is gonna be caught in our catch block and it's up to us to handle that error. For the time being, I'm simply going to print out expense could not be saved. Actually, let's change expense to context, could not be saved. Now that we have that, let's actually do the code that can throw that error that would be caught. So the very first thing that we need to access to is the manage context. And to access the manage context, we can actually get it from our expense instance. So let managed context equals expense dot managed object context. Now that we have the managed object context, this is the thing that we need to save. Let's actually perform that save by calling its save function. So managed context dot save. And Dale, what is this throw word? It means that this is the function that we, the reason we created the, the do, try, catch. So this is going to possibly throw an exception, and so we've got to say that we're trying to do this. Exactly, so I'm gonna press enter for autocomplete, and we're gonna get yelled at right now because call can throw but is not marked with try. If a code can throw an error or an exception, you need to actually mark it with the try keyword, just so us as the developers know that this is the questionable line of code that can actually stop our execution. So if this line actually succeeds, we'll move on and we'll simply pop off our single expense view controller from the view stack. So self.navigationcontroller.pop view controller with the animation of true. This means that our context was saved, our expense was saved, and now we can get out of our single expense view controller and go back to our table view that shows all of our expenses.